Hello, hello, Facebook, everyone. How are you? So today I'm going very straightforward into the topic I want to, to talk about. I haven't been here for a while, so I hope everyone is fine. Um, so as many of you know, or in case you're listening to me for the first time, I'm Mariana, I'm doctor, I'm a doctor, as you can see, I'm Dr. Mariana Calleja. And today I really need to talk about this topic, uh, depression, suicide and abuse, right? Why do I want to talk about this today? Because, uh, well, yesterday I was having this conversation with a few people and over the past few days about things happening around us uh, that relate to these topics. These topics are so common these days. They are, they are really everywhere and it's sad. It's sad and we've all been there somehow one way or another. So yesterday I was talking, for example, with, with someone and I was recalling a relationship I used to be in many, many, many years ago uh, where it was very, very abusive. And I totally for have forgotten about it because I was able to overcome uh, this situation. And it was many years ago. And I remember, you know, this person being uh, very, very depressive, very manipulative, very, yeah, very anxious and, and even... Uh, making people you know apart it's like they becoming this you know into this bubble of their own where people can't function so bear with me as i speak because i'm just thinking thinking here out loud uh this is massive 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 uh, i'm just feeling the need to to talk about this today because things have been happening and i think it's just so important the sadness hi donna how are you gorgeous the sadness that there is uh, around these topics, it really, really gets me. For example, today I woke up to the news. Many of you know that Chris Cornell was found dead. And Chris Cornell, well, I really admire him. Most of you may be joining, you, you know who he is, this big musician. And he apparently was found dead in, in a hotel because of apparent suicide. They still have to, to, to check or confirm if it was it. Um, but that was on the news and I just the thought of someone being alone in a hotel room at the very end of their lives just like that and taking this decision saying you know saying it was the case oh my god I don't know about you but that that really gets me it really gets me in a way that it's you know it gets me as a doctor it get me it gets me as a human being it gets me as a family member it gets me as a friend I just couldn't imagine anyone well I've had people around me like relatives close people friends being being in this situation of depression and depression bringing you down so much even myself included sometimes we've all been there one way or another feeling so down so dark you know like fogged in a cloud that you can't find purpose or you can't find how to even wake up you know on a normal day or just go do your normal things because everything feels so much harder when you are in this state and also how about when when you have someone close to you very very close to you that is in this situation that is they are so so sad and you can't find you know the reason why they are so sad they, they start losing themselves in this spiral they start and they stop doing things they love time goes by uh, life seems to be, you know, like far down uh, and you just know after a while has passed by, has gone by and, and then you realize, right? Then you realize one day you see it and you think, oh my God, this, this is depression. Maybe this is, you know, this has been, they have been anxiety attacks, panic attacks, bad dreams, confusion, fights. Um, I don't know, so, so many things. And this is just so, so important. And as I said before, if you're just joining me, thank you for everyone who is on the line. Uh, I'm really, really amazed. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, so as if you just join, I was just saying at the beginning how this spot of being depressed to the point of suicide uh, for many people is just... It's just so sad. It's sad because I think what what is going on inside or how many things have happened before to, to get you to the point to feel so, so lonely, so, so, you know, uh, what's the word? Um, 
surrendered to life like that. It's not fair. We're not here. In, we were not born to, to get to that point. There is a reason for every single, you know, depression. We address depression and anxiety as, you know, as something that we have to go to the doctor and ask for pills, anxiety pills. And, and no, no, I mean, pills help. Yes, we need them at some point. But there is something deeper, deeper down that root of or that moment of depression, that moment of sadness. You know, depression can be chronic, could be long, long time, uh, could be just mild, could be for a few days, could be two days. I mean, there's so, so many kinds, so many types, so many, so many different kinds of, of dep depression in the ways we individually feel them because we are all unique. We are all uh, very, very different in our own personalities, in the way we react to things, in the way we react to the world. Uh, so it's just very different. It doesn't have to be, be you know, being long term, months and weeks of feeling sad in our pajamas. No, that's like the cliche. But you know, all these pills, they help to cope. But there is a reason deep under, down, down under this, this thing that we are showing to the world because it's difficult to hide. There is something deeper. There is a root to that sadness. There is a root to that depression. There is a root to that thing that is making us feel so sad. And that is where I keep, you know, where I really want to, to, to get into this. And, and, you know, bear with me. <laughs> Think with me. If you agree, if you, you know, give me hearts, give me love, give me something. If this is you or someone around you this time, these days or in the past, we, you know, that sadness comes from something that has made us feel this same sadness in the past. There are things that we don't even remember that are on our, you know, unconscious, subconscious that made us have this, this way of, of reacting to, to life and things. And maybe it's just a chip that was you know, a little information in our chip that was put there a while back because of some other circumstance that happened before. And, and the only way we know how to react to something in the present is because of the memories in our past. Make sense? So all these, these sudden or chronic things that, that are happening to so many people, putting them in this situation of, of depression, of sadness, of discomfort, of, of hopelessness. It's because of something that we haven't healed, emotional, emotionally healed, you know. Yeah, Donna, it, Donna says, totally agree, it's bizarre how the mind works. And that's so true, it's bizarre, and at the same time it's fascinating, and at the same time it's, you know, every, everyone's mind is one huge world. So it's so important to just understand. And what I have found out with this is this that I'm just going to say, communication. Everything, everything, everything in our lives, every single problem, every single doubt, every single issue, every single fight, every single anything we have had and that we still have will come through or will, you will go, be able to go through it as you communicate, as you talk as you take things out of your of your system it could be with your hairdresser with your local priest with your best friend with your mom whoever but it's just communication people communication donna says oh i'm learning about the mind in psychology yeah and it's so great you're doing psychology donna i applaud you <laughs> really really needed and really great so as i was saying I was thinking yesterday, I was really thinking, thinking a lot, and even I made my notes, and communication is everything. We need to talk. The things that, that we, that makes us feel to this point of, of depression, of sadness, of, of hopelessness, as I was saying before, is just what we haven't communicated, what we haven't talked about, and we are not perfect. I am not perfect. No one is perfect, but we will keep always growing and evolving, and the only way to do that is through, through talking, through communication. That is what I have learned. And I'm telling you this as a, you know, in personal experience and also as a doctor, um, as a family member or as a friend. 
Um, Hector, hey, important topic. It is so deep, deep that it has to be addressed, including the entire family. Absolutely. Absolutely. Actually, family members, when someone is ill, when someone is, uh, yeah, it could be chronic illness. For example, I, I, have talk, I have talked before here on live or on my posts, if you follow me or on my blog, I keep talking about pain, right? Chronic pain. So I usually talk chronic, how chronic pain or just pain as, as we have it in the human experience is physical, but also emotional. And yesterday I was thinking, okay, I have to, to make this more in detail because we have this chronic uh, pain that is physical. For example, when we break a leg or when we are diagnosed with, with uh, something, you know, arthritis or fibromyalgia or any, any kind of disease, even, even cancer. There are many, many things that are physical and that they will give us pain, right? But there is also the emotional pain. And, and I keep talking about this, but maybe it's even more necessary to, to detail some more on this emotional pain. For example, uh, for example, yesterday I was thinking, when I was thinking about all of this, how emotional pain can be a, a relative being ill, just like Hector said, uh, being ill, you know, chronically with a disease, how it really has consequences, not just on the person that is suffering it, but on the family, on the, you know, friends, relatives, how to cope with this, how, how to deal, how to treat, how to talk about these, about this chronic illness with the person that is suffering it. How do you, do you even start that conversation or someone that is passing away? Maybe someone that is already in a, in a last stage of life kind of situation, which we're all going to be there. So it's just normal to address these things. How do you talk? How do you hug? How do you touch this person that is already leaving us? That is difficult and that is emotional pain. Someone that has uh, a, a family member that is in deep, deep depression and even suicidal sometimes because this happens and people are afraid to say that they are going through these things because they are they are afraid of being judged because that's how society works <laughs> it, it, it sucks i know uh but it's how it is and the the best best thing and only thing that we can do is just talk talk about it talk about it with someone that you trust and 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 seek for help seek for help and and realize that we are not alone you are not alone i'm not alone people around me are not alone we just need to talk um say for example here's another example of emotional pain i yesterday as well when i was talking with this with this uh friend person i i was remembering this relationship i used to be many many years ago when i was in high school and I was too young and I didn't know, but it turned out to be somehow abusive, never physical, but it was very, very manipulative uh, relationship, a very, um, yeah, very, very alienating, very intense. Um, I remember a few things and, and it was all, you know, uh, some kind of abuse. And the most important thing is that when it's not physical, it's this, um, it's this em emotional or thing that happens in your mind. People are playing with your brain and it's mean. It's mean. Don't take me wrong. Don't take me the wrong way. I, I mean, it's mean because, because when it's you, the one that is affected, you, f you think, why? Why me? When you realize about it, you think, why is this person doing this to me? But, this is a big but, uh, or a big key, we have to think this is not personal. You have to never, never take things personal because someone that is so depressed, they are not saying things to hurt you. Sometimes, I mean, they do, they do, but they are not aware of this, right? They are not aware of what we're, they're saying. They are not saying it to you, but they are saying it to their own pain. They are talking from their space, their spot of pain. And this is where it's super important to just think, okay, how can I help this person? Sometimes people will be open to receive help. Sometimes people won't be open to receive help. And it's difficult to think and to say, okay, this is my limit. This is where where I can help and from here onwards I can't because it's not me is, is the other person not you know not taking it and it's difficult it's difficult it's difficult for everybody so I wonder how how come we 
don't talk about these things a lot more, you know, more naturally, more frequent, um, more, it's so necessary. So as, as I'm saying, I had this, this experience back in my teen years when I was in high school, then I had more experiences in, in later adulthood, late twenties, then thirties, uh, even you know, last year I had a very strong experience related to this and it really affected me for over six months or more until I had the ability to talk about it, to open about it uh, with family and friends so they could help me cope. Um, and but, but again, it's the sadness. How much sadness is there in the world, in our world, like here? I'm really meaning here. Everything that I'm uh, trying to address with this uh, is how how everything is deep down into our own little little spot that spot where where we remain alone when there's no one and nothing that no one can do for us you know like pee or poo <laughs> there's no one that can do that for you well the same with depression or the same with with abuse when I say abuse I mean um physical abuse it could be sexual abuse it could be emotional abuse it could be verbal abuse uh, it could be uh, blackmailing, which happens a lot. But all of these that I'm just saying, they all tie together into one, one same thing, same thing. And to me, as I've learned it, or and if you think about it, so bear with me, everything, you know, a person that is very depressive or very aggressive or very manipulative or suicidal or, you know, bullies, all, all this is abuse. It's abuse in one way or another. And that abuse comes from a simple lack of love. People who have these, these personalities, people who have these situations, people who have these, these issues, they are hurting other people from a place where they lack love. Maybe they had a very traumatic childhood maybe they probably most of them they were abused right most of them were bullied uh in as i'm saying one way or another when i say abuse that's a very 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 big term um but abuse is, is anything is anything from from bullying at school or at home uh i mean it happens sadly bullying from your parents bullying from your brothers there's many, many happy people and functional families, but there's many non-functional people as well. And we are born just issueless, if that's a word, without issues. We are born just plain, pure, thoughtless, so many things, right? As life goes by, we have all these experiences and these feelings, and there are many feelings, especially between one and five years old that we can't remember. We just can't remember when, when we had, you know, what we lived in those first years of life. Hey, Twyla. Hello. Thank you again, everybody who has joined. I, I'm really impressed. I'm really um, overwhelmed and happy. I'm very inspired too. So if you want to, to, to post some comments, I'm reading you. So thank you and feel free. I, if you want to ask stuff, I will be also answering because I can read you right here. <laughs> So as I was saying, there are these first, first years of life that many, many essential, the, probably the most essential things that happens to us uh, are in these first three, four, five years of, of life, right? And most of the times we don't remember. We have flashes of memories, you know, like I have flashes of memories when I used to live with my parents at the farm, where I used to... Um, uh, to go on, on the milking cow time at 3 a.m., you know, all wrapped with a cover, with a throw, that kind of thing. I have flashes of, of, of images from my early, early childhood. But it's been until these last months and, and years that I have realized how much of my own issues I used to be super jealous and I used to be very, very, you know, my self esteem was very low. Um, I used to be very. Uh, dominant sometimes because of the same thing and I've started to understand and realize that all of this jealousy was because I had some some issue that crept in after my parents were divorced and after other things that happened in life right and there was you know this this lapse of, of years in time in my early time in my early life like it happens to all of us to you to me to 
your parents, your uh, partners, everyone, uh, that there are things that we don't remember and maybe we lacked hugs, maybe we didn't get much kisses from, from our parents just because that's the way they are and, and they were brought up the same way. So it's no one's fault, but we had all these lacks that now that we became adults, we don't remember, we don't know where those came from. So it's just about going back, going back and understanding, trying to dig into that root and bring it out. And it's so painful sometimes. Uh, well, most of the times it's painful right there, right at that moment. Um, but it's the one thing that will set you free. And from there, we can so, so start healing so many depressions and so many anxieties. Mm. All of these patterns, all of these behaviors, I mean, we're all living one human experience. One. We're all living the one same thing. I go through some things, you go through some other things, but we get to learn the same lessons. Does this make sense? Can you give me some yay, loves, heart, soul? I can know that this makes sense to you. So as I was saying, this is so huge and so important and I wish I can just keep talking and talking about this, right? Because, so, as I'm saying, any depression, any sense of feeling that sadness, that emptiness inside us, it comes from somewhere in the past where we are, where lacking some, some love, some gestures. We, as human beings, we just want to feel loved, to feel accepted. Everything that makes us fear not being loved and not being accepted will bring on all these issues. It's just as simple as that. I know it's not simple to heal, it's not, it's not simple to realize it, but now that you're listening to it, you know it makes sense because we've all been there. So it's that essential. Again, everybody, thank you. Thank you for joining. I see so many people joining this broadcast. So thank you so much. If you just join, feel free to watch the replay uh, after I'm done. I am very inspired, so I don't know when I will be done, but hopefully <laughs> I'll, I'll keep talking. Um, Eric says, hi, Doug. Will you recommend a guided regression session with a therapist to try and resolve this baggage? Well, Eric, yeah, I haven't done that, but if you feel a hunch or a hint for that and you want to give it a try, please do. Anything that helps you heal the, the emotional side of the mind, it will really help. So whatever helps. I've, I've been doing meditation and tapping for a while now and it really, really helps me. It really has helped me uncover and understand so many things. But that's me. It, it has worked for me. I have tried other things that I didn't really resonate. Uh, but these, these ones resonated with me. They really helped me go through. Uh, also important finding, you know, a bunch of people that really, that you feel comfortable with, that you can talk. It could be, you know, a support group in your local community. It could be a friend. It could be, as I said before, your hairdresser, your local priest, um, your grandfather, someone just, just, Talking, 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 as I will keep saying all the time, with any kind of, of, of pain, because, you know, I keep talking about pain, pain, pain. Uh, in this case, all of this is emotional pain, and emotional pain is maybe some term that is difficult to understand, but if you think of someone that has been maybe you or maybe a relative, in an abusive relationship, someone that has been raped or assaulted, someone that has been just bullying you for years with little, little comments, little nagging comments that, that they make you snap and feel hurt and make you, these comments that people do sometimes and make you feel uh, less, that should always set an alarm to you. Don't, don't, we should never take things personal ever, ever from anyone, even if it's your parents, they love you, or maybe they, you know, it, ha it has been a tricky relationship, probably not because of you, but because they have their own issues that they haven't been able to solve, or to clear, or to even become aware, so how, how can you just 
be and become aware of things not being personal to you, but people talking from their spot of pain. So that just that first step will release you and make you feel tons, ages lighter. And from there, you will understand or start understanding things and things and things. You know, it takes time, but it's just, if you're determined to feel well, or even if you don't know it really yet, but you know there's sadness and there's something you want to do and you don't know what to do about it because you have no clue, you've tried pills, you have tried psychiatrists and psychologists and, and therapies, even alternative things. I'm telling you, there's always, always this thing that you, there's always more to do, there's always more to do, and sometimes it will be painful, sometimes it will be easy, but as long as you keep going and doing and doing in the, in, towards healing and towards feeling good, in the end, as I said before, all we want is to just feel loved, feel accepted, and just feel good at the end of the day and at the end of our lives, and we all go through the same lessons all in all, I mean, different experiences, same lessons. So I can help you because I have gone, you know, I've, I've had at least three people in my life trying to commit suicide. One of them being successful in their suicide attempt. Um, and this was a friend from, from high school when I was just 15. And, you know, I just think how, how can we help someone that is feeling so lonely, so lonely, so alienated they the, the more they feel like that or the more we feel like that we put uh walls we put walls and then those walls will make us be really apart from the entire world how can we break those walls little by little they, they won't break on a you know like an earthquake it's our own wall we built it so it's up to us to break it to break it so we can go out into the world again and if it's people around us, how can we help, help them from the outside of the world to break that so they can come outside into the world? Because it's just normal and human to want to just feel good. That's all we want, right? So if that's right, give me hearts right now. Just say yes with a heart, <laughs> right? We all just want to feel good. At the end of every single day no matter how much money there's in our bank accounts no matter how much food or cake we ate today it doesn't matter how many clothes I was able to buy this month we just want to feel good and feel good starts here and it starts with just feeling peace of mind so that when we lose this or we when when we don't have this that's when we feel all these anxiety in our stomachs what do we do all these worries people don't like me oh my god they're they're following me what am i doing wrong or oh, you know all these crazy ideas that the mind you know and the ego does do mm, yeah uh, because it's just our ego working with our past experiences we are like a computer think of ourselves or our brains as a computer we are we have this chip so our chip is working with everything that we have had in the past. Some experiences were very, very strong. And those are the ones that, that really dominate the reactions that we have against situations that are similar in the present and in the future. So there is this thing that we have to, to become, you know, to start doing, which is awareness to becoming aware of all these things so we can start healing changing shifting releasing letting go stuff and this is what happens with with depression and anxiety and abuse and and suicide they are all part of the same rope or the same ladder or the same as you want to say they are all part of the same thing so we need to understand that we need to become aware of ourselves inside to talk with people that we feel comfortable enough with so we can just start you know like a tap of water if it's rusty and you open it because no water has come through that tap in ages the first drops will be rusty and you know explosive but after the water will you know keeps running and running it will become flowing and clear and that's the same with feelings and that's what the same with life and that's the same with 
with yourself and with emotions. So we need to start opening that tap of water, that tap of emotions and feelings and thoughts and memories and flashes so they can start flowing out, flowing out, flowing out. The more it flows out, the more you will be able to understand why are you reacting this way or another or why this other person is affecting you so much or why, you know, every time we react to someone is because there's an issue on us, in us, right? I mean, inside us. Whatever they say that might hurt, don't, as I said before, don't take it personal. If it made you snap and react, it's because there is something in here, in your head, that you have to analyze before it becomes chronic or it, before it becomes an issue, right? Like all these things. So, as you see, are you following? Does it make sense to you? It's all part of the same thing. Everything that we have uh, or that we suffer or that people around us suffer, it's all because of some lack of some kind during our lifetime. So what is that lack? Probably love of some kind. Maybe you are a mother who lost a kid. Maybe you are someone who grew up you know, without parents. Maybe you have been sick, diagnosed from young age about you know from something that has been really life-changing and limiting maybe you have grown up in a dysfunctional family where you someone was an alcoholic maybe you were uh, hit a lot maybe you were raped maybe you have been you know a drug addict or someone you know has been you know abusing from drugs so so many things and I could could keep going and all these examples that I just said they all come from the same source and that is lack of love from some kind during our growth most important growth years so i think i'll finish now this is um something i really really want to keep talking about whether you have you know your own situation or someone you love or kids uh please just think these things if you take something from this conversation is don't take anything personal ever when that happens then snap right away and think okay why is this making me react what is it that i need to to see and heal about myself second um talk communicate any miscommunication that you do everything that you swallow and that you don't speak about your 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 problems or your worries they will stay inside your body and they will become physical at some point i'm not saying you know i'm not dooming you like oh you will get uh, some kind of disease or diagnosis because you're not speaking your your worries no but it could happen it could happen because anything that we swallow emotionally Will, will manifest in the body. The body will scream what the mind quiets. There's a saying that goes something, something like that, right? Uh, the body screams what the mind quiets. Yeah, something like that. You get the point, um, right? So please, please, those two things. Talk, analyze yourself, don't panic, don't fear. We all go through that. If you have someone that really is going through through depression, through some kind of abuse, you you know, we can all help each other. We just need to observe, to be aware of these things that I just said, so you can just maybe help someone. Maybe you just thought of someone that you didn't know they could be going through some kind of, of, of bullying or abuse or something. And now you know, and now you are aware, and maybe you will be able to help this person. And, and that's how it goes. We help each other. So... If you are in a medical control and you are under pills and treatments, keep them, follow them. Don't ever, you know, stop doing what your doctor, local doctor is saying. I am a doctor as well. And these other things, you know, I'm more healing with words here than pills because I am on a screen, <laughs> clearly. So keep your controls, keep your doctor, keep your communication and more most of all please if you need to watch this again go for it if you just watched uh, if you just joined please watch the replay it's super important and 
And let's just help people to feel feel good, to feel loved and not let's not let anyone be alone in, in the in this daily experience. It's just so sad that it rips my heart and at the same time we can do something about it. So I hope this helps. Holy crap, I'm sorry that was a <laughs> a thunder and that was scary so with this i'm going <laughs> okay i love you so much oh i'll i'll come back and i'll talk about this <laughs> not the thunder but about this whole topic so take care and i'll see you in another doctor's talk or just a talk bye